All right. So if you're in the military and you're accused of a crime, that's something that, you know, obviously you can be for court martial. How much time do we have to prepare, um, you know, after we've been arrested to even defend ourselves? Well, it really depends. The most important thing you can do is start preparing immediately because you really don't know how much time you're going to have to prepare. If a case goes to a court martial, that process may take four months, six months, 12 months, or even longer. We've had some cases that literally take over a year because CID and NCIS, they're just fairly slow at things. What would take a the FBI or maybe even take the, a, a local um, police office or their detectives a, a week or a couple months to investigate a case, which may seem very simple, and then make a decision on it. NCIS, CID, and OSI, they take an extraordinary amount of time for something that can seem very, very basic. So uh, on one spectrum of things, it may take 10, 12 months before your case, a decision is made on your case, the investigation is completed, they make a decision on whether to whether they have probable cause, whether to subject title you or not, and then from there it goes over to the command and the prosecution team to determine if they're going to prosecute you. So on one side of the one spectrum, you, you, you may have a lot of time. On the other side of things, it may happen very, very quickly. If the command makes a decision um, it's, it's to take it at a lower level and it's an NJP or an Article 15, that may happen pretty quickly. Or if the command makes a decision to do a general officer memorandum of reprimand or some type of adverse administrative actions, that may, again, happen a lot more quickly. So it's really hard to say how much time they have. It can be anywhere from a week to a year or longer. But that's not really the thing to focus on in my mind. The thing to focus on in my mind is to start preparing your defense immediately. Because if you have exculpatory witnesses, if you have evidence, if you have you know, potentially evidence that can exonerate you, for, for example, text messages between you and the accuser that are on your cell phone, GPS data, metadata, other things that may get lost or you may you know, upgrade your phone not knowing how important this stuff is, it's really important to act immediately or as early as soon as possible to start gaining the evidence or gathering the evidence that you may need to exonerate yourself because you don't know what's going to help you uh, you know, a year down the road. In addition, if you wait, let's say a case takes 12, 10 or 12 months, and now we need to go to the scene. Well, the scene could have easily changed. A lot of things could happen to a crime scene in a matter of hours, let alone a month or even a year. Witnesses or eyewitnesses may no longer be available. We may not be able to find them. They may not remember things. Um, CCTV footage is huge nowadays. Almost everything we see is captured on camera or in CCTV footage. Well, typically that was set to destroy itself or record over it in seven days or if we're lucky, 30 days. So if you wait and wait and wait to do something about it, evidence that may exonerate you and really save your butt down the road may be gone. And so while you do, you, you may have a lot of time while you're under investigation, it's really important not to let that lull into a sense of security where, well, nothing's happened in my case in six months, so nothing's going to. What typically happens is six, eight, nine, ten months go by, and next thing you know, you've got a charge sheet and you don't have the ability to go get the evidence you need, or you don't you didn't preserve the evidence that you need, and now you're really behind the eight ball. So if you're thinking that maybe this isn't even actually going to go to military court or court martial, it's still advisable to uh, start the preparation for as if it were going to. Yeah, well, you never know what's going to go to court martial or not. I'm always really amazed at what does and doesn't go to court martial. I've seen some pretty serious allegations of sexual assault um, or even some very serious other allegations of fraud where the case doesn't go to a court martial, or I'm really assuming it's going to, for whatever reason, maybe the complainant drops out or they weren't able to procure enough evidence. So and sometimes these very serious cases that we think are going to go to court martial don't. And on the other side of things, the case which may seem minor, fraternization, violating a general order, military specific offenses where you think there's no way this is going to go to a court martial, you get a pissed off command and next thing you know, we're at a special or general court martial. So I, I think it's dangerous to make an assumption about what will or will not go to court martial. If you've been accused of an offense under the UCMJ, you've had your rights read to you, you've been brought down to CID, NCIS, OSI, or an accusation has been made against you, I think the smartest thing to do is just assume it probably is and start preparing as if it's going to go to court martial. And if it doesn't, that's fantastic. It's like, you know, I live in Florida now, and so we have hurricanes. We're right in the middle of hurricane season as we're uh, recording this. You know, if they say a Category 3 is going to be rolling through Tampa, 
you need to prepare for that. You know, you need to go get your water, get your supplies. If you have hurricane shutters, put the shutters up and just prepare yourself for what could be a very large and damaging storm. And if that turns or it misses you, great, that's fantastic. At least you were well prepared. I'd much rather be well prepared in that situation and being able to weather the storm as opposed to having a Cat 3 or a Cat 4 hit and be caught completely unprepared because those are the people that really get hurt by it.